welcome to everyone last lecture we have started the microwave unit 3 microwave passive devices and in this lecture we are going to study e plane t scattering matrix i am bhagyashri thurat and welcome to my channel pinnacle if you like this video then please like and share with your friends In this lecture, we are going to study the scattering matrix of E plane T and E plane T working. So E plane T is a junction formed by attaching a simple waveguide to the broader dimension of rectangular waveguide, which is having a two ports, port 1 and port 2. Both are collinear ports. This is a one waveguide attach with another this is called side arm or e arm this is also called series and voltage junction we are going to study the working of this if 3 is an input at mode te10 then these are the out of phase at output 1 and output 2. So this is input. If output 1, port 1 is an input, port 2 is an input, then at a 3 output we get maximum if these two inputs are out of phase, 180 degree out of phase, then we are getting maximum input at port 3. If both are same in phase, then we are getting subtracting value here. So always remember that if we want to get maximum output, then port 1 and port 2 are out of phase. We want to find the scattering matrix. So for scattering matrix, we know that the E plane T is having a 3 ports. So that's why it is a S3 by 3 matrix. So it is S11, S12, S13, S21, S22, S23, S31, S32, S33. This is a generalized scattering matrix for E plane T. No, this is nothing but a generalized scattering matrix. This is my E plane T. We want to solve this S matrix for E plane T. So we already know that the S13 and S23 both are out of phase 180 degree with input port 3. That's why S23 is equal to minus S13. This is a equation we are getting. Now again this is very important. We are finding the scattering matrix for perfectly match E plane T. So if 3 is an input there is no reflected back that means it is a perfectly match. That's why S33 is a 0. And the third and very important property of scattering matrix is a symmetric property. In symmetric property, we know that Sij is equal to Sji, means input, i is an input, j is output, then again input and output, means S12 is equal to S21, then S23 is equal to S32, and S13 is equal to S31. Okay? So, this is symmetric property. So we are putting the values, that's why S11, then S12, S13, then S21 becomes S12, S22. Now this is out of phase, that's why minus S13, S13, minus S13 and 0. Remember that where is the out of phase, you have to put a minus and we replace this symmetric properties values in our generalized scattering matrix equation. For this uh, S matrix, we are having S11, S12, S13 and S22, 4 unknowns and remaining are minus for the same value. So we are using, considering symmetric property and using unitary property, matrix multiplied by complex conjugate of matrix is equal to unitary property. So unitary property means diagonally 111 remaining 0. 
If you multiply R1 and C1, we are getting S11 square plus S12 square plus S13 square. We are getting only magnitude is equal to 1. Then S12 square plus S22 magnitude square plus S13 magnitude square is equal to 1. So if we consider these two equations that S11 square plus S12 square magnitude of S13 square is equal to magnitude of S12 square plus S magnitude of S22 square plus magnitude of S13 square then S12 S12 is getting cancelled S13 S13 getting cancelled and we are getting S11 square is equal to S22 square so S11 is equal to S22 this is the first equation we are getting from unknown okay now we are going to multiply r3 c3 multiply r3 c1 so r3 c3 is equal to s13 square plus s13 square is equal to 1 okay and r3 c1 s13 S11 complex conjugate minus S13 S12 complex conjugate is equal to 0. So from equation this we are getting S13 square is equal to 1. So S13 square is equal to 1 divided by 2. and S13 is equal to 1 divided by under root of 2 because here we are removing square. Okay, So we are getting this value for S13 is equal to 1 divided by under root of 2. Now for this equation if S13 is a common then S11 complex conjugate minus S12 complex conjugate is equal to 0. If you multiply S110 then it is a 0 and we are getting from this equation S11 is equal to S12. Also we know that from previous equation S11 S12 is equal to S22. So we are getting these values from this simultaneous equation. Now if you solve all the equations that S11 square plus S12 square plus S13 square is equal to 1 and put the values in that that S11, S12 both are equal and S13 is equal to 1 divided by under root of 2. So we are getting the values S11 square plus S12 square plus 1 divided by under root of 2 square is equal to 1. So if you put the values in that then we are getting S11 square plus S11 square plus 1 divided by 2 is equal to 1. That means 2 S11 square is equal to 1 minus 1 divided by 2. So 2 S11 square is equal to 1 divided by 2 and S11 square is equal to 1 because 2 divided S11 is equal to 1 divided by 2. After putting these values in this equation, we are getting 
S matrix is equal to S11 is 1 divided by 2, S12 1 divided by 2, S13 1 divided by under root of 2. Okay, and these are the values. Now we are interested in output scattering matrix and this is input. So V1 is equal to 1 divided by 2 A1 plus 1 divided by 2 A2 plus 1 divided by under root of 2 A3. Similarly, B2 is equal to A2 A1 plus 1 divided by 2 A2 minus 1 divided by under root of 2 A3. Similarly, for B3, 1 divided by under root of 2 A1 minus 1 divided by under root of 2 A2. So, this is our output equation. By using that output equation, you can solve any numericals based on E plane D. Thank you.